Now I got something to show you, and it's gonna be something momentous. Everybody, it's me, Wrestling's number one hype man, aka the excellent reviewer right now. It's time to talk about the second day of the G1 Climax this year. And like I said, and I'm going to say it throughout this series right now, uh, I'm going to be talking mainly about the B-Block matches. So without further ado, let's get down to it. Firstly, we had Juice Robinson taking on Satoshi Kojima in the first match of this of this day of the tournament. The up-and-comer against the legend of Satoshi Kojima. They, were, they had an incredible, intense moments throughout the match. It felt as though Kojima was basically destroying Juice Robinson, hitting him with clotheslines, brain busters, and a lot of hard-hitting moves. And it seemed as though Kojima was just inches away of picking up the victory when Juice Robinson, out of nowhere, hits him with a left punch, following it up with Pulp Friction giving himself the win and two points in this tournament. Juice Robinson is off to a great start. Now, the second match following after that, we had Tama Tonga against Big Mike, Michael Elgin. And as you can tell from the get-go, when it comes to Big Mike, he starts off quickly. He starts dominating the match throughout the beginning of it. And then Tama Tonga, he starts to get his foot in the door in this match. And just as though it seems as though Michael gets his footing back in this match, he had a dominating performance. And this match is very back and forth with the action and how they present it. Both wrestlers, they put up one hell of a fight. And it seems as though no matter what... No matter what, no matter what Michael Elgin puts up, Tama Tonga has an answer to, and vice versa. They always seem to have each other's numbers with incredible counters. And in the end, Michael Elgin was at the top, about to hit a Death Valley driver. And when he throws it, guess what? Tama Tonga stuns him with a stun gun. One, two, three, and he picks up the win and picks up two points for himself in this G1 Climax tournament. One of the most anticipated matches, at least in my book, was when the two members of Los Ingobernables de Japón took on each other. They faced each other. Evil went one-on-one -on -one against Sonata. Both stablemates. Evil starts off with a nice handshake. He wants to start this off with respect. Quickly kicks Sonata in the gut once it's done. Even though these two people are stablemates, they're friends, they hold no punches because this is a very important tournament with a very important consequence if they were to win. So Sonata, I gotta give him props for this. He does a sweet RKO from the top rope to the outside, which was pretty darn good. Almost got the 20 count for both of them. And one of the best matches of the night. So many great wrestling moves, counters. It seems as though these two men making magic with each other. And this match shows when you watch it, if you haven't seen it, I tell you to go watch it. Because this shows why I think that Sonata, Cold Skull Sonata, has big things coming for his future. As he picks up the win after hitting Evil with a moonsault, getting himself two points. After that, Toro Yanu goes up against the Rainmaker, Okada Kazuchika, in a one-on-one -on -one match. Two people, once again, from the same stable. Of course, Taro Yanu has some tricks up his sleeves. He's always an amazing joy to watch throughout the match whenever he competes. I still thought it was great. There was this moment where Toriyano, of course, he tries to take off the padding against the turnbuckle, but then Okada hits him, and then he tries to put it back in. I thought it was great. And Toriyano surprisingly put up an amazing and good fight against Kazuchika Okada, the best professional wrestler of our current generation. Never forget that. And there's this uh, awesome moment where Toriyano, he takes the padding off, and he bonks Okada in the head with it. I thought it was great. It was funny, and this match was just really amazing just because of how comedic and out of the ordinary it is for Okada. Like I said, the best pound-for-pound -pound wrestler of our current generation. And Okada ended up picking up the victory after using Red Ink, one of his submission moves, which is rare that you see Okada use a submission to win a match, but nonetheless, he ends up picking up the win. Red Ink makes, makes Toriyanu tap out, and just like that, he has two points and has a good bidding 
for himself right now in the G1 Climax Tournament. And finally, we get to the main event of Day 2, and that is Kenny Omega against Minoru Suzuki, the IWGP United States Champion against the Never Open Weight Champion, two of my personal favorites in New Japan right now going head-to-head. -head. And Suzuki had this intimidating look as soon as he went out. Every You could see the, the malice in his eyes, and Kenny Omega was pretending to be very... Very nervous, very like he was phased by Minoru Suzuki. Of course, it was all a trick because Kenny Omega is afraid of no one. And just an amazing and incredible match. Five minutes into this match, and I already love it just because of everything that is happening and the amazing work and talent that these two have. And it seems as though whenever Minoru Suzuki, because as we all know, Minoru Suzuki, he can go hardcore. And whenever he goes hardcore, that's when Kenny can answer back. Suzuki did a brilliant move of pushing the referee into Kenny Omega's V trigger, of course, allowing Suzuki Gun to come in, attack Kenny Omega. But then guess what? Here comes Bullet Club. Here comes Hangman Page. And here comes Bad Luck Fale. And quickly out of the ring, all of them go because Bullet Club has each other f -f for life. And that was an amazing moment. And we had this nice little fight between Suzuki Gun and Bullet Club. I love seeing that type of match. Now there was this brilliant moment where Kenny Omega, he just threatens, he's just egging Suzuki on. He, after he, of course, he spits on him and he's like, come on, give me your hardest hit. Which, by the way, you should never go one-on-one -on -one in a hard-hitting match with Minoru Suzuki ever in your life. Just saying, it's not going to end up well. And in one of the amazing uh, matches that I have ever seen, in this year's G1 Climax, and I know there's a lot of way to go, but this is going to stand out one, as one of the best matches. It took multiple V-triggers and finally a one-winged angel for Kenny to pick up the win. And this could be the beginning of Kenny Omega winning the G1 Climax once again. So that's been it for the second day of the G1 Climax. With Juice Robinson, Tama Tonga, Sonata, Kazuchika Okada, and Kenny Omega adding two points to their scoreboards. And that's the end of this episode for my official review for it. Do me a favor. Let me know what you guys think about the G1 Climax in the comments section below. Is it shaping up to what you expected it would be? Or is it something of a little less of a disappointment? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to see more content like this on a daily basis and you want to know what's going on in the G1 Climax and all the other world of professional wrestling, you want to want to do me a favor and let me know in the comment section below and hit that like, share, and subscribe button. You want to do all that great stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for subscribing. I couldn't be here without you. Thank you guys so much. I've been Samuel V, a.k.a. Wrestling's number one hype man, a.k.a. The Excellent Reviewer, and I will see you guys as soon as I can.